What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. Welcome to another edition of the If I Could Only Have One series where we take a look at two guns, whether similar or in some cases very different, and compare stats, features, triggers, they'll be shooting along the way, and at the end, there will be a winner. But here's the thing, both of these guns are awesome, and if you're thinking about getting or have either one, you're doing great. This is just an opportunity to challenge myself and perhaps challenge you to say, if you could only have one, which one would it be? We'll call this the Battle of the Price Tag Shockers. More on that later. Today's lineup features two premium double-stacked 1911s, or in one case a 2011, the Wilson Combat EDC X9 and the STI Staccato P. This Wilson was temporarily donated by my buddy Harry over at Harry's Holsters. Check out the description for more information. Both the STI and the Wilson share a pedigree for producing top-tier firearms that live up to their expectations. The Wilson can be customized from the factory to fit your hand size and shooting style, while the STI delivers basically every feature a shooter can ask for right out of the box. Either can serve in a carry role, home defense, competition running, and general range use. Okay, I'll admit that the carry role might be a bit of a stretch for many, including me, though I've seen it done. Regardless, it's time to dive in and see which one takes home the trophy. Let's do it. All right, let's stack these guys up and see how they compare to each other. Now, the Wilson on top is going to be 7.4 inches in length versus 8 inches on the STI. The STI is definitely a little bit longer. And in terms of height, we're going to be 6 inches on the STI versus 5.25 inches on the Wilson. So again, the STI just a little bit bigger. Now, in terms of width, the STI is 1.5 inches versus 1.4 inches on the Wilson, although it seems like the Wilson might be a tiny bit wider with those uh, those uh, uh, thumb safeties, but, uh, but apparently not according to Wilson. Now, we've got 4.15 inches on the barrel versus 4 inches here, and 36.15 ounces versus 29.09. So the Wilson seemingly is a little bit more petite all the way around. Even still, I think they stack up very nicely together. All right, we're going to take a walk around the STI, but before we do, let's look at the magazines for just a moment. It does come with two magazines, and they're actually very interesting looking the way they feed in. But we've got a 17-round magazine, and then we also have a 21-round magazine. Now, it says 20, but you can actually fit 21 in here. I've done that multiple times does stick out just a little bit further, but I think that's actually kind of a cool look. Now, they have ones that are even longer than that, but uh, but this seems to work just fine for me. But we'll stick to our 17-round magazine for the video. Now, in terms of the grip, this is where things get very interesting with the STI. A portion of this is polymer, so all of the grip itself, as well as the, uh, the trigger and the trigger guard, that's all polymer, and then it feeds into steel. So an interesting blend of uh, different materials, but it actually works pretty well with this. Now, it's a tree bark grip texture, and it does go all the way around, and I have to say, the texture on this is fantastic. It's reminiscent of a custom stipple job, something like that. I think it looks good. It's very attractive, but it also is extremely functional. Man, this gun goes nowhere. And then we've got a magwell at the bottom. I've become a real big fan of magwells. Uh, they give you just a little bit more leverage while you're shooting. And again, it makes it just a little bit easier to get those magazines in. So uh, I think they really put together a nice uh, a grip, if nothing else, for this. And then as we move up, we've got our standard 1911 beaver tail and grip safety with a little memory hump here as well. And some unique styling going on here. Now there are a couple little bumps on both sides or little uh, hard edges because this is all steel as we move up into here. And I was really thinking that that was going to impact the shooting because it sits right at the web of your hand. But I'll tell you, when I started shooting, I did not notice it at all. So uh, kudos to STI for that. Now we do have ambidextrous thumb safeties, some pretty nice paddles, always uh, difficult to capture these on camera. But they worked very well. And of course, you would carry this cocked and locked or use it cocked and locked. But, uh, but again, very nice, very articulate, uh, very responsive. Uh, they definitely did a good job. And then we've got a very interesting uh, magazine release here. It is not ambidextrous, and I don't believe you can flip this around. So there might be some different grip frames that you can order for this uh, that might be left-hand friendly. So uh, holler down below if you know about that. And then as we move up, we do have our slide lock slide release, and this is also how you would disassemble the firearm. I don't do that in these videos, but I did do it for the original video. So go back and check that out when you get a chance if you're curious about the takedown. And then as we move up, of course, we've got a pretty 
pretty long <laughs> accessory rail to hang all your toys off of. Quite impressive there. And then this polymer trigger front, we do have some texture here as well if you use that for memory. And it's really well undercut too. So um, a very custom looking grip on here. There's a lot going on with this frame, but I'll tell you what, I think STI did a great job putting it all together. Now, when it comes to the Wilson styling, some might say that it's a little bit more conservative perhaps, but in terms of magazines, we've got a couple of 15 round magazines that come with the firearm. Now, I always make a joke in uh, the intros when there are a lot of magazines, uh, Harry from Harry's Holsters, he's got a pretty good magazine collection going for this. Quite impressive, Some, I think like eight magazines or something like that. So I guess you could never have too many. Now in terms of the grip, it's got some very nice G10 grips going on on both the sides. They're a starburst pattern, I'll tell you what, they feel fantastic and I think they look really good too. We've got a little Wilson emblem on here. I think these are pewter if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, so correct me if I'm wrong down below if that's not the case. And then we've got these X-Tac uh, ch uh, checkering patterns on both the front and back strap. They are tremendous. I mean, this gun really feels awesome in the hand. Now, it's interesting, you can order different uh, frame sizes directly from Wilson. So I'm not sure if this might be a medium or a large. If there was a size smaller, I would go with that um, because it actually, it is pretty beefy. There's no question about it. Uh, now I can uh, certainly still get my hand around it. I've got large hands, but, uh, but one size smaller actually might be an interesting experience. So now another thing that's unique about this, um, even though it's essentially a 1911, it does not have the grip safety here. So a very different uh, style of doing things, but, uh, but Wilson's very confident in this. They say it uh, improves the reliability and accuracy. Uh, you know, you'll have to weigh in down below on your experience with that, but so far so good with this. But we do have a nice beaver tail just like the STI. And then again, it's going to be hammer driven, a single action. So we do uh, carry it cocked and locked. Once again, we've got our safety here. One thing I have noticed and I teased Harry about a little bit. Um, now you can tighten this down, but it's a tiny, tiny bit loose. So just kind of funny on that. But uh, but either way, you can fix it very easily. Um, I haven't done it. It's not mine. I'm going to let him fix that, but uh, funny nonetheless. But then we've got our magazine release, uh, pretty standard here, nothing terribly exciting. Once again, not ambi and, uh, and you can't swap it around from what I understand. And then we've got our slide lock, slide release and uh, takedown. Uh, both of these guns take down relatively similar. I have to give the edge to the Wilson. It's just a tiny bit easier to take down and maintain. So uh, kudos to Wilson for that. And then an accessory rail, a little bit shorter, but still you can hang all your toys off of. And a more traditional rounded uh, trigger guard there, a little glimpse at the trigger, which we'll get to here in just a little while. So again, the, the Wilson is doing things differently, no doubt about it, but still a great package. Let's take a look at the slide of the STI for a moment or two. One thing you'll notice right off the bat are the front and rear serrations. These serrations are tremendous. They're very bitey and very attractive as well. I love form and function when it all comes together. And I think they did a great job doing this, milling these guys out. Uh, very nice. And then as we move up the slide with our sights, we do have a front fiber optic, a little bit of serration in there as well. Um, I like the sights okay. I mean, I've, fiber optics are good. I always prefer HD night sites, but, uh, but fiber optics will work. And in terms of accuracy, these are very accurate. And then we've got some blacked out serrated rears, uh, pretty plain Jane, but again, uh, they work really well and they've got a nice ledge for one handed manipulations there. So uh, in terms of sights, they're fine. I don't have a problem with that. And then we'll real quickly take a look at that bull barrel. I'll tell you what, this thing is awesome. It is a beefy barrel. You get a better look at it in the original video when I take the firearm down, but uh, but either way, uh, it's very well done. Uh, the overall package of this is very nice. So really cool slide, uh, very attractive. Um, I, I think the styling is very unique. Wilson Combat does things a little bit differently with their slide. Now they carry forward the X-Tac checkering on both the front and the rear serrations. Once again, very usable, but I also think they look fantastic. Now, clearly this is a stainless steel slide. I would prefer black or dark gray, something like that, but I've kind of gotten used to this and I see why Harry did it. I mean, it's a very unique look and very different. It sets itself apart from a lot of the other firearms out there. And then we've got some more milling up top. So it's a little bit more squared off perhaps than uh, some other firearms. But again, very unique styling and some uh, deep serrations here on the back. Uh, just kind of custom or fine milling work there to reduce some of the glare. And then in terms of our sights, once again, a front fiber optic. 
proved to be very accurate, no doubt about it. As I started uh, shooting a little bit faster, I, I struggle a little bit more with fiber optic. I much prefer HD, uh, as I said, with the STI, but still these proved to be very good. And some serrations as we go back. I need to clean this a little bit more before I send it to Harry, but these serrations are needed since it's stainless. And then a Wilson Combat logo right there. Somebody in the uh, previous video said they didn't like that. It kind of cheapens it. I don't think that's true. I actually kind of like that. And then our rear sight, once again, black serrated. I actually like the rear sight on this better than the STI. Uh, Wilson does a good job with their sights. I think they're uh, very well thought out um, and they work quite well. So, uh, and then I well, wanna, don't wanna forget the old barrel here. We've got, uh, once again, a bull barrel, although a little bit thinner than the uh, STI, but some really nice fluting going along there that does reduce weight and some more fluting on the chamber as well. So uh, very interesting, uh, doing things differently than STI, but either way, they both look fantastic. The shooting experience with the EDC X9 was fantastic. The X frame is very ergonomic, though if I were ordering it from Wilson, I'd go a size smaller just to get a bit more of my hands around it. Even still, the grips and checkering not only look cool, they lock your hands firmly in place. The front fiber optic sight allowed for accurate shots while taking your time, and the serrated blacked out rear shows just enough space on either side of the front sight to have a full target picture. The recoil impulse is soft and there's little muzzle flip, allowing for ultra-fast follow-ups. My only complaint with the X9 is the slide release. It's just far enough away that I can't use my dominant thumb, so I either have to use my support thumb or an overhand rack. A small gripe on an otherwise amazing shooter. The shooting experience with the Staccato P was equally awesome. The aggressive polymer grip locks your hand firmly in place and the magwell gives you just enough leverage to ensure the muzzle stays flat. Weighing in at roughly 36 ounces, the recoil impulse is barely there, making for an all-day shooter. The sights were point of aim, point of impact at normal distances, and the front fiber optic once again allowed for serious accuracy. Like the Wilson, the STI's trigger was light and short, begging me to go faster with every shot. I did find that the STI has a bit more weight up front, which proved to be an advantage while running at speed. That heavy bull barrel comes in very handy. To be honest, it's an experience I recommend for everyone. Let's take a quick look at the STI trigger. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the firearm. Now you'll notice right off the bat, it's skeletonized and it is polymer. I don't find that to be an issue at all. And now it's adjustable here as well. So you can certainly dial it into your needs, but it all comes down to the pull. So our take up, there's your take up right there. There's hardly any at all. And then our pull, Right there, coming in at 3.5 pounds pretty consistently on the Lyman gauge. And then our reset is right there. The travel is very short. And then a follow-up right there. We'll do this just one more time again. Our reset, look at that. And then our follow-up again. Very short travel. It's a light trigger. I absolutely love it. Now let's see how the Wilson Combat Trigger stacks up. There we go. Now, the trigger on this one is going to be, I'm not sure if it's steel or aluminum, something like that. It's not polymer. Once again, adjustable, some nice serrations on the front. So doing it a little different, but uh, but equally fun, no doubt about that. So our take up is right there. I mean, you basically put your finger on the trigger, dead air, and you're right at the wall. And there's the brake. Look at the travel on that. Now it's 3.11 pounds, so still very light. And then our reset is right there and back out to the start. We'll do this a couple more times. We've got our take up right to the wall. I mean, there's hardly anything. And there's your travel, so short. And our reset is right there and a follow up. Again, both of the triggers on these guys are tremendous and they just beg to go fast. Well guys, here we are at the end of another If I Could Only Have One and I have to say, they get more fun with every episode. As I stated in the original video, I was a bit on the fence about the Wilson Combat, but after spending time with it and putting rounds through it, I am a believer. It's got a lot to like about it. Those G10 Starburst grips, the X-Tac grip checkering and front and rear serrations, they look great and very functional. The sights are awesome and dialed in very, very accurate. And the trigger is tremendous, I have to say. It screams to go fast. 
Now, when I think of the STI Staccato P, once again, a lot going for it. That tree bark texture on a polymer grip, I realize there's a little bit of polymer in there, but the second you start shooting it, that doesn't matter at all, I promise you. And that Magwell gives you that leverage. The styling on it is fantastic. Those uh, front and rear serrations are very usable. The sights are dialed in just like the Wilson, and the trigger, once again, is tremendous. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet is price. The Wilson comes in just under $3,000 and the STI just under $2,000. So both are expensive. The STI might be a slightly better deal depending on what you're going for. But again, this is an if I could only have one. And at the end of the day, even though I've ping-ponged back and forth between the two, I'd take the STI Staccato P. I absolutely love it and it's got all the features I want in a firearm. So guys, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Be sure to holler down in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree and what experiences you have with these guys. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.